Okay, optimistic raspberry is AFK. Um, okay, water. Are people just not sure who what their name is or or what? I'm just calling you by what I see in the in the screen chat. Okay, water. Are you with us? This is very, very strange. Okay, uh, six over 15, thank you very much. Okay, but um, you also learned when you were younger that when you have a fraction, take a look at the numerator and denominator and see if you can reduce. That is, if you can divide the same number out of both, to make them into smaller numbers, but still represents the exact same, um, I guess, proportion. Uh, Jose, if you were to reduce this, what would that turn into? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, like, uh, simplify this one, right? Yes, please. So it's going to be uh, uh, 2 over 5. So, say that again? 2 over 5. Uh, yeah. I mean, 2 over 5. It would be 2 over, over 5, right? A six is a multiple of three, 15 is a multiple of three. You divide top and bottom by three, you get two over five. But um, doing this, multiplying across and then reducing is actually, um, no, that's okay. It's, uh, it's extra work. When you do this and you realize that you can reduce, you can reduce, you can reduce, mathematicians are tired orange, what do I say? Lazy. Lazy. Mathematicians are the laziest people. Why do I have to do this when I can get this right away? The way you do that is take a look at the numerator and the denominator and see if there is something you can divide out, um, I guess, cross fractionally. Right? That looks like some kind of magic. Like, why the heck is that even allowed? But this is the reasoning. Okay? This is my reasoning. If I have two over three multiplied with three over five, if I multiply across, I can technically write this as two over three, uh, two times three and three times five. Yes? From your silence, I'm gonna say yes. But remember in, in the multiplication, the order doesn't matter. If I have two times three and I have three times two, both of them will give me a six. And so if I were to, you know, just playing around, right? Write this as three over two and three times five. And then I, again, sort of reverse it and write it into two fractions. Two over three times three over five is actually also equivalent to three over three. Let me use a different color. Three over three and two over five. Why am I doing this? Well, what's three over three? Sleepy Muffin? Um, three over three is one whole. <laughs> yeah, it's so. just one, it's a one whole. So if I have one over one times two over five, what's my answer? Two over five and that is the same as when I multiply across and reduce. So essentially what I'm doing is I am reducing first and then multiplying after. If you see any number in the numerator and denominator in a multiplication that you can divide out, do it first. So will this always work if they're like diagonal from each other? If there is, even if they're not diagonal, if they're top and bottom, you can still do it. Bottom. Oh, okay. okay. The reason is, is this is the reasoning. Okay. If you're multiplying across two times three is the same as three times two. Right. And so I'm just playing around with numbers. And when you do so, you realize when you are multiplying fractions, you can check 
to see if there is any combination of numerator and denominator that you can reduce before you multiply. Okay. Why am I asking you to check this out? Well, let me clear this and give you a rational expression, okay? Let's pretend I gave you an x plus two divided by an x plus three, and that is multiplying with an x plus three over an x plus five, okay? Normally, if you just do regular fraction multiplication, you'd have to multiply across, multiply across, the numerator becomes, uh, I'm gonna do this really quickly, x squared plus five x plus six, the bottom becomes x squared plus eight x plus 15. You're like, uh, what am I supposed to do, right? But before we get to any of that, why put yourself through so much work when you notice just like regular fractions, there is a common number, remember this bracket is one number, and this common number can divide out into one. And so it turns into x plus two over x plus five. And we're good. Tired chicken with something. Am I done? I think so. You're almost right. You're like 99% right. There's one more thing that I have to do after this when I'm doing rational expressions. Can you remember what that is? Um, state the um, restrictions. Right on. Good job. Can you do that for me? Um, negative three and negative five. Right on. X can't be a negative three. Oh, negative five is lower. X can't be a negative five. X can't be a negative three. Good job. Okay. There's one example. Here's another example for a uh, tired banana. Do you remember how to divide fractions? It's okay if it's a no. I just want you to be honest. Um, no, not really. Not really, that's okay. Uh, chill smoothie, did I ask you for something? I don't think so. Chill smoothie, do you remember? No, I that's don't. That's okay, that's okay. Happy Broccoli, can you help us? Yeah, you gotta flip the second fraction. Yeah. And then you can like multiply. Perfect. You may not remember how to divide fractions because you weren't actually taught. You were told that dividing something is the same as multiplying what we call the reciprocal. Okay? So I'm going to write it like this. 2 over 3 divided by 4 over 5 is actually the same as multiplying with the reciprocal. And if you try that with easy numbers, it makes sense. Here's an example. If I take 10 and I divide by a two, what's the answer? Five. It is equivalent to multiplying with half. What's half of 10? Five, boom, just proved it, okay? So just believe me for now in saying that when you're dividing a fraction, it's so much easier to multiply with the reciprocal keyword. I want you to use this from now on, reciprocal if you forgot the word. And if you're multiplying, you can do cross reduction. So let's try it. Um, we had happy broccoli, tired toast. Do you see anything, uh, any multiples of the same number in the numerator and denominator? Uh, four and two. Four and, and you two. divide both of them by two. Perfect, so two divided by two is a one, and four divided by two is a two, and now you multiply across, it becomes five over six. That's it. Let's take that idea and stick it as in parallel with a real example. Um, how about a little bit harder? How about X? squared plus 
three X plus two over X plus five is divided by X squared plus six X plus five over X plus one. And remember, some of you are already getting started on it, but remember the whole point of rational expressions is to try and simplify so that it's easier to graph, easier to work with, easier to do math with, okay? So the whole point is that I give you a ridiculously unnecessarily complex rational expression and it's your job to sort of simplify it, okay? So uh, I'm gonna give you a quick minute Actually, you know what, just for the sake of time, I'd rather give you more opportunities to do experience. Uh, after tired post is just tired, tired, no breakfast. Um, would you be able to quickly factor the first numerator for me? Tired, no breakfast, tired blank. Can I pass? Absolutely, no worries. Uh, fine cereal, could you do that for me? Uh, sure. Give it a shot. It's uh, um, X, uh, uh, X minus, no X plus, um, let me get a piece of paper. Yep. And then while he's doing that, Hungry Granola, if you can do the, the second denominator for me, you can move on quicker. Should I say it now or wait? Oh, yeah, sure, if you want. Um, is it x plus 2 times x plus 3? Uh, close. Um, you probably reverse the numbers. I need two numbers that multiply oh. to 5. Oh, yeah. Um, But add to a six. Oh yeah, never mind. It's x plus one times x plus five. Perfect. All right. What else? Uh, find serial. You got two numbers for me. Um, it's uh, three and one. Close. Um, you think you reverse the numbers as well? I need two numbers that multiply to a two. Oh, it's two and one. Yeah, two and one. So it's x plus one and x plus two. Right on. So once you do that, remember it's easier or rather it is more correct to take a division of fractions and multiply it. Oh. Okay, uh, we got fine cereal, hungry granola, Sleepy toast. Can I ask a question, Mr. Ab Kim? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was trying to do the question on my own, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is wrong or not, but I flipped the reciprocal before I factored it. Is that wrong? Um, did you get to this point? Um, yeah, I it's exactly the same. It. Yeah, it's the same. Like, I, I just didn't know if there was like some sort of rule. That you into it or something. Um, I get you. Um, what can I say about that? Math isn't as full of rules as some people think. But so again, sometimes it's it's good to appeal to your logic. If I say, um, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Don't worry too much. There is uh, no particular order. You can flip first and then factor or vice versa. You don't have to worry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, sorry. I, I didn't mean to like put you uh, uh, on, on edge just by like waiting for me to say something. Um, okay. So we've got X plus one, X plus one, X plus one. There's a whole bunch of stuff I can cross out. So um, 
Go for it. Uh, Sleepy Toast. Could you try to uh, simplify for us? Just lead me to where I can go. Um, you could cancel out the x plus fives. X plus five is in the denominator. X plus five is in the numerator. Good. What else? And then the x plus one. Which one? Um, I feel like either would work, but I don't know. You are correct. You are correct. Because even here, it's x plus one multiplied by something, multiplied by something. And this is all just division. So you can just do whatever you want. So let's just do that for now. You can cross if you want to. What's left is x plus one, x plus two. All of this was actually just a parabola. But I'm not done. Uh, tire grilled cheese, would you uh, do the honors for restrictions? The tire grilled cheese is too tired. Um, are you here? Sorry. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. Um, <laughs> so negative five. Happy ne negative five. And two. Negative two. Uh, oh, no. Uh, this is in the numerator, so we don't have to worry. Oh, negative one. Negative one, good. Is there another one? Pardon? Is there another one? No, that's it. Oh, okay. okay. Um, please note, this isn't the best example, but um, uh, tired uh, grilled cheese, where were you particularly looking for your restrictions? Um, the original one. Okay, where in the original? Or not the original, like the second line. Yeah, one. yes. So this would be easier because it's already factored. Where in the factored portion were you looking for the restrictions? The denominator. I don't know why I said two. Denominator and here and here, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing a division of rational expressions, there's one more location you need to look for. Tired bagel, do you remember why we were doing restrictions? Why are there restrictions? What was the main reason? Why do we have to have them in the first place? I can't completely remember, but it has something to do with um, like, like can't equal zero or something. Yes, you're absolutely right. We, we need restrictions because we can't divide by a zero. But what are we doing here? We are dividing. That means this entire fraction also can't equal a zero. And how does that fraction equal a zero? If the numerator is a zero. And so when you are dividing rational expressions, you also need to consider the numerator of the dividing fraction as well. I'm going to write, I'm going to type out a couple of pointers that you can follow and then let's do a difficult example together. Okay. Uh, hold on a sec. Do people have, does anyone still need to copy something down from this? I have a question. Yes. So for, um, like after you flip the second fraction, you use I the just reciprocal, want to like yes. make sure, yeah, you can cross out like parts of, so the second fraction in the numerator, it's X plus one and X plus five. And then the denominator of the other one is x plus five. You can just cross out the x plus five. Yes. In the second fraction. Yes. Yeah, so, like it doesn't matter that the x plus one is also there. The x plus one is multiplying. So let's put it uh -huh. this way. Imagine I have uh, two multiplied by, let's just do it this way, x plus one. So one, uh, can't really see it, right? Oh, let me do the use of top portion so that you can see it. Here's my example. Let's pretend I have a fraction where it's like one over five and that's being multiplied by 
sorry, uh, times x plus one. So one, two, and a five multiplied by a one, five, and a one, right? This one can stay. It's just a multiplication, but this five and that five will divide each other out. What this is, is actually one multiplied by two, which is multiplied by one, which is multiplied by five. Uh -huh. And all of this is being divided by five and one. Okay. So yes. So if by chance it was one put plus five in the numerator, you wouldn't be able to cross it out, right? Yes, yes. Okay. When it's a one plus five, all of a sudden it, it's not multiple. If you think about bed mass, remember multiplication and so bed mass, multiplication and division can do whatever order they want, right? But as soon as we step into addition and subtraction, it's like a different realm. So you have to be very careful of order. You can't just sort of do that and leave the one plus on its own. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a really, really, really important point. Thanks for asking that. Okay, I, I know that there are people that will still make a mistake on that. I just gotta hammer that out of your system. Okay, I'm gonna clear this and I will um, write some notes for you just to recall. All right, so rule number one, uh, when, when multiplying, dividing rational expressions, number one, factor uh, all polynomials if possible. Number two, um, if dividing, change to multiply, um, with the reciprocal. That's really important. It just makes everything easier for you. Um, we will reduce, that is divide out common binomials, uh, common terms. And then four, simplify get the final answer and five state restrictions okay and then here is the big caveat if you are dividing restrictions come from all denominators and the numerator of the fractions you are dividing. I'm gonna give you another example of that. Some people are copying frantically, so don't worry, I'll give you some time. Uh, what's a good example? Um, Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so everything is factored. Okay. And I hope everyone's with me. Um, if I'm dividing, I'm going to change to multiplying with the reciprocal. There it is. 
But uh, for the sake of me demonstrating where the restrictions come from, I am going to, before I even reduce, I'm going to state the restrictions right away. Okay. I cannot have this portion of the fraction equal to zero because of what we talked about last class. I cannot have this portion equal to zero because of what we talked about last class, but I also cannot have any of this equal to zero because if I do, what happens? It will be three X plus two, X minus five over X minus two, X minus three, divided by zero over x plus two over x minus two. I am dividing by a zero. Zero over 10 equals a zero. A zero over a thousand equals a zero. Zero over anything will equal a zero. So if the numerator equals a zero, I am essentially dividing by a zero and everyone dies, okay? You can't divide by a zero. For the same arguments as we talked about last class, the numerator can no longer be a zero. So if you think that's going to confuse you a little bit, try stating this restrictions before you do anything. Okay, so restrictions. X can't be a positive two. It can't be a positive three. It can't be a negative five. It can't be a positive five. It can't be a positive seven. It can't be a negative two. And it can't be a positive two, but I already have it down. And by convention, just to put it in order, minus five, then minus two, then two, three, five, then seven. Whew. Any questions? No. I have a question. Yes, go for it. Um, I've noticed that all the questions we've been doing are trinomial, uh, simple trinomial factoring. Is this, are these steps um, applicable for all rational expressions? Like, yes. as. As long as you have a multiplication or division where you can sort of cancel stuff out, right? Okay. If it's all based on multiplication division, anything can be divided out naturally. If that answers your question. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna touch on your topic, but seriously, if you even have like some kind of ridiculous thing like um, let me blow your mind here for a second. What if I had like, you know, trigonometry sine over cosine multiplied by cosine over tangent, right? You can still do this and say, oh, this rational expression is that. Like you can, you can do that. So it's, oh, it's just like simple, fancy word for just like simplifying fractions well yeah so, yeah so yeah oh. <laughs> so when i'm multiplying or dividing rational experiment i just wanted you to know that just because there's an x plus five x minus five or anything it doesn't mean it changes the entire world of fraction it's still the same idea the only thing you have to watch out for that's new is this idea of restrictions because we can't have the denom we can't divide by a zero okay and on a test, would we get similar questions to the types of ones that we were practicing today? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. the, the difficulty would increase depending on how hard the factoring is. Right? Okay. And that's why I keep pushing everyone to practice their, their factoring, because that's going to be the biggest roadblock, I think. All right. Um, I have a question. Yes. How come the, the seven and the three aren't negative? Seven and the three aren't negative. Uh, well, 
I see here, it's going to be x minus 7. x minus 7 can't be a 0. That means if I add 7 to both sides, I know that x cannot be a 7. OK. So it's a positive 7. OK? Um, all right, I'm going to clear this screen. Hope you have something down here. If not, I mean, the recording will go up. You can watch the entire class again, if you like. Uh, I am going to pull up Oops. I'm going to pull up uh, the practice sheet exercises that I believe I put up online. Right. Uh, where are you, my class? Share screen. So this is available online already. Some of you might have uh, downloaded and have it next to you. The answer key, I believe, is already up there. I like us to try together. Um, let's just start easy. We'll do one together right now. You can try it right now. And then I'm going to do number seven for you just to show you, again, easy to hard what the spectrum of difficulty can be. All right. So you know what? I'll give you five minutes. See if you can common factor, group factor, difference of squares factor, do whatever you need to. Follow the, the five steps that we had. Factor this first, simplify, and then state restrictions. OK? Five minutes. Oh, someone on chat. I don't see the sheet on the classroom. Oh, really? All right, let me take a look. Right, everyone else, um, I have the screen shared, so see if you can do that first. Yeah, I thought uh, it's numbered, but, but has no problems. Oh, for real? OK. Oh, that's trippy. No, 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 it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I think um, when I take the, the math editor of Microsoft Word and then I just print it as a PDF, it does something weird. You know what? Um, you know, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna upload the, the actual Microsoft document, not the PDF version of it. It might help. But anyways, um, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, you know what? That might be a good exercise because PDFs sometimes do that until you open it for real. So when you click on something, the preview that uh, like Google Chrome gives you uh, oftentimes is not accurate, right? It just gives you a quick preview and maybe the, 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 the fractions that I put in there is just too much for the preview to load up. What you can do is actually download it, and then it, will, uh, it should show you everything properly. Yeah, it works. I just confirmed it. For now, just use what the shared screen that I have for you and we'll go from there, okay? Take about five minutes, see if you can quickly factor and just try number one and then I'm gonna do number seven with you. Well, we got two tire pastas, that's crazy. Quick four minutes. I'm just going to grab more coffee. <laughs>
<sighs> oh, you know what, class? In retrospect, I should just put you into uh, groups again and just had you factor each part separately and make it easy for yourselves. Stupid me. Um, we got tire pass, a tire bagel, tired cereal. What is the factor form for the first numerator, please? The tired cereal is too tired. Tired chicken, can you help us out? Um, yes. So it has to, so sorry for the first one. Yes, please. The numerator. Okay. So does that mean, wait, is it the one on the right or the left? Uh, the left one. Okay. Left. Okay. So it's kind of, it's supposed to multiply to zero, but okay. So six and zero. So is that how oh, you do that just... one? Oh, no, just, just uh, common factoring. I just wanted you to factor it. So you're right. It is 6 and 0. The oh, X okay. comes out, and then there's an X plus 6, so it would be 6 and 0. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, the bottom is a difference of squares. Uh, can I get another person? Tired waffle. Can you venture a guess as what the difference of squares would turn into? Tired waffle, too tired. Or AFK. Uh, op oh, there you are. X plus two and? Getting the first one, it makes the second one easier. It's a difference of squares, X plus two and X minus two. All right. Keep it going. Um, let's see, Aaron, <clears throat> are you with us? Yeah. Were you able to attempt the second numerator? For question one? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So should I just explain it for the second step? Uh, sure, Just you can just give us the answer. Or like, the numerator? numerator. Like uh, what the factored form would be. Oh, like it fully done? Yes. Um, I got x exponent 3 plus 5x exponent 2 subtract 6x over um, x exponent 3 plus 4x exponent 2 subtract okay. I see what you're Sorry, doing. I don't exactly know. What yeah, no, no, no. Uh, you're, you're, you guys are, you guys are going hard mode. Um, you're not. Um, I don't think you heard what I was asking for. When you are trying to multiply or divide uh, rational expressions like this, uh -huh. uh, the first thing we need to do is factor it so that we can look for ways to cancel stuff out and divide stuff out. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant the finished answer for it. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, well. <laughs> Even your, your finished answer sounds too complex. And so we want to avoid that because it's way too hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to do is see if we can cancel that out. Um, lowercase tire pasta, I don't understand how to get that. Uh, which part were you talking about? Maybe the numerator or the denominator? Which part were you referring to? Thank you. Just the first fraction. Okay. Um, I'll go at it very quickly. Remember, x squared plus 6x, it's not a trinomial. Okay. Um, so all I'm going to do first is check hey, maybe I can common factor. x squared and 6x has an x uh, in common. So I'm going to take an x out or divide an x out, leaving me with x plus 6. That's the numerator. Next. 
x squared minus four is actually a difference of squares. It is the same as a squared minus b squared. And if we remember from previous lessons, a difference of squares can be written with this as a template, a, b, a, b plus minus. In this case, the a is the x, of course, and b squared would be two squared because that equals four. So x squared minus four can be rewritten as a, b, a, b, x2, x2, plus minus. I know I went a little bit fast, but I am building this on uh, last class's lesson. So uh, see if you can practice a little more on the fractions or just ask me a little bit later and we can review, okay? Next. I'm gonna erase this just so I don't confuse anybody. So the next fraction is x squared plus x minus two. Um, if I factor it, do, 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 it will be plus two minus one. Uh, people can confirm if I'm doing that right because I still have baby brain right now. Uh, plus six, plus nine, do, 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 three and three. There it is. Now, from here, I am looking for ways I can simplify if possible. Are there any common terms? Do, do, do. I see an x plus two and x plus two. And nothing else. Wow, I'm pretty evil, eh? Oh, well. So the final answer would be on the numerator, x, x plus six, x minus one, because I'm multiplying across x, x plus six, x minus one, and x minus two, x plus three, and x plus three in the denominator. I would have to state the restrictions. x cannot be x minus two, nor x plus two. X cannot be minus three, nor minus three. So minus three, minus two, and a two. I do not have to worry about the numerator for this case because I am doing a multiplication to start. I don't have to state the restrictions using that numerator. Any questions? Um, when you're writing out your answer and you do x plus two and x plus one, does it matter what order they go in? It doesn't they, matter. They do not. Two times one or one times two is exactly the same answer. Um, is it possible you could explain how you got your restrictions? Yes. Uh, where did the x minus one come? X minus one is here. It comes from factoring this topic. Now I will go ahead, uh, tired cereal, is that okay? Can I move on to answer? Okay, uh, for everyone else, uh, sorry, whoever was that was asking, sorry, I couldn't see uh, who- Oh up. yeah, sorry, it was me. Okay, um, the restrictions, as always, because this is a multiplication, I only have to worry about the denominators. I see that the denominators are broken down into x plus two, x minus two, and then x plus three, x plus three. So individually, in my head, remember, I'm being lazy, so I just sort of skipped it. But if I wasn't lazy, I would say, okay, I know that x plus 2 cannot equal a 0. And so what, what would x have to be? If I subtract both sides, x cannot be a negative 2. So that's where that one came in. Next, x minus 2 x minus two cannot be a zero or else I'll be dividing by a zero. So that means x cannot be a positive two to ensure the denominator is not a zero. Can you find the last one for me? Um, x plus three. Right, x plus three cannot be a zero or else the universe explodes, so? 
a negative three? Yeah, there you go. It's just like, why didn't you write the other negative three too? Uh, because I'm lazy and it's redundant. It's pointless to write it twice because I already stated negative three as part of the restrictions. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like saying, um, I'm gonna drive to work and I'm gonna drive to work. Why are you telling me this twice, Mr. Kim? Same idea. Everyone's okay? Um, I haven't done this. Just to make sure everyone's still here and not sleeping. Give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna move on to that hard question. It would be funny if everyone went from um, okay to optimistic or and hungry and fine and everyone turned into tired. <laughs> That'll probably be a little discouraging, but I mean, what can you do? All right, I'm going to clear this and do the last question for you. Um, this is supposed to be something, I don't know what. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I guess something went missing in the print. It's supposed to be a 25, supposed to be a 25. If that's missing on your uploaded thing, then uh, I do apologize. You can, I guess, uh, I don't know use this video as a, as a reference. All right, I'm not gonna ask you to factor this. I'm gonna do it myself. Oof. Four, 16, five, 60 and negative 16. That means this would have to be four, 15, no, 10 and six. It would be negative 10 and negative six which means this would turn into 2x would be 4x squared minus 10x. So it would be 2x and 2x minus five. That would be one of the brackets and the other one would be 2x, 6x plus 15. If I take out negative three, that would be 2x minus five, 2x minus three is the top numerator divided by 2x, x, one and one, multiplied by x minus seven, x plus one. Oh man, there's another number that's missing. Give me a second. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. Uh, I just have to pull it up from my computer. Sorry about that. I didn't realize there are so many missing. It's 21. Oh, is it just me? 21. Thank you. It's weird. That's a 21. Thank you. Um, okay, so that means that's a 42, but adds to negative 17. 42, six and seven, no. 21 and two, no. Three and 14, yes. Negative three, negative 14. So two X, negative three X, negative 14 X plus 21. That means X comes out, two X minus three. Negative seven comes out, two X minus three. Okay, so it will be X minus seven, two X minus three. And then again, being lazy, I'm going to do the factoring and the reciprocal at the same time. Okay. So now 4x squared minus one, I'm going to write on top. This becomes 2x plus one, 2x minus one. And the bottom is add, multiplies to 100, adds to negative 20. That's negative 10, negative 10. So the first number would be 2x minus five second number will be two x minus five four x squared negative 10 negative 10 and positive 25 okay so this how do you do that so quick it's because no 
and mid 30s pushing 40. Do you know how many years of math I have on you? Okay, don't don't tell me that, you know, I'm good at math and you're not kind of thing. Okay, I am not going to accept that. I have experienced blood, sweat and tears going through my high school days. Um, I don't even want to think about it because it was a really tough time for me because I had to sort of catch up. Remember, I told you I wasn't like I was like subpar even from element uh, from middle school. So going through high school was my catch up period and I busted my butt. And lo and behold, suddenly I'm teaching people math too, right? Um, be that as it may, all of this, all of this scribbling comes from the fact that I am lazy and I can finally do it in my head because I've done it on paper so many times. Okay. Uh, Tire Passa, this is so confusing. Uh, I hope that you're at least following, like doing the factoring can be confusing or can be difficult, but I hope it's not necessarily confusing. It's a lot of work, but I do hope that you understand what I'm doing. It's just a matter of how quickly or, and how well, you know, I'm doing that might be difficult for you. Is from as from a teacher's perspective, if I hear that it's confusing, it sounds like you don't understand like at all what's going on, and I hope that's not the case. Please reach out to me, and if you want me to go slower with a couple of things, yeah, it it's not easy. I'm telling you right now, it I don't expect everyone to be at a certain like at this level. It's it's not easy, but. Hey, honestly, if, if a guy like me can do it to the point where I'm starting to teach it, I'm pretty sure all of you can too. Okay. Let's, um, let's keep... hmm? Mr. Kim, I, I just have a question. Yeah. So for that first term or not, I don't know if it's a term, but that first kind of part before you multiply. Um, so it's all of them ended up being two X minus something or, or plus something, but the last one, the bottom, right. Why is that one not a 2x plus 1? Oh, I, I was simply factoring this. Take a look. 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Oh, I was looking. Okay, okay, sorry. I was I was looking at a different um, a different number. My bad. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, as long as you get it. No, no, no. Don't worry, don't worry. As long as you get it. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a high there. I see uh, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. Mm, now it's just a matching game. Oh, x plus one, x plus one. 2x minus five, 2x minus five. 2x minus one. I don't see a minus, but I do see a plus. 2x plus one and a 2x plus one. And then x minus seven, x minus seven. Wow, now Mr. Kim is rude. Two X minus one over two X minus five, that's it. So the question is, would you rather work with this and try to sketch it, or would you try to work with this and try to sketch it, right? That's, that's, the, that's the skill that we're developing, rational expressions and simplifying. So now that we have this and we've got all this factored out anyways, we can state the restrictions. Let's see. I'm going to highlight in blue here what we have to watch out for. I have to watch out for this denominator. I have to do this denominator. I have to do this denominator. And because it's a division, I can't divide by a zero. I got to do the restrictions for that denominator. So that would be, let's see. Uh, I'm going to do this in my head. But if you set this to 2x plus 1 equals 0, that would be 2x minus 1. x would be negative 1 over 2. And remember, I don't want it to equal a 0. And so if I don't want it to equal a 0, then I can't have it equal to negative 1, which means I can't have x equal negative half. I can't have x equal negative 1. I can't have x equal positive seven. I can't have x equal a positive three over two. 
I can't have x equal negative 1 over 2, which I already have. I can have x equal positive 1 over 2. I can't have x equal positive 3 over 2. And I already did that already. And then by convention, it's better to write the smaller numbers first. So negative 1, negative half, half, 3 over 2, 5 over 2, and 7. Woo! Rough one. I'm sure you have some questions, but any clarifications for this particular example before we take a big break? Good. I'm hearing some background noise from the side. Is uh, everyone okay? Everyone's okay? Not, not that I mind too much. It's just I'm wondering if uh, they had a question and there was some kind of sound issue. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have approached 10 o'clock. Um, as usual, I think it's best if we uh, start a little earlier so that I can dismiss you right at 11.30 and you can enjoy a, a big lunch or whatever. From 11.30 to 12.30, I am going to make myself available for a question. So any last minute things before we go on our break? Once. Um, <clears throat> quick question. Um, so after you, you have the final, uh, the, all the things that you just crossed out when you're mm -hmm. simplifying, that's the one part. But once you simplify and cross out all the similarities the anything that's left over is the final product like is that it yes this is anything that's left over and keep the function. things that are the numerators and keep the things of the denominators and that's the final product yep so after you cross it remember when you're when you're dividing out what's left is um like when you have the same number dividing it becomes a one i didn't really write it but all this is one so it basically becomes one times one times one times one times one times 2x minus 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 2x minus 5. Yeah, I get that. I'm just more wondering, like, if there's going to be a question in the future where um, there aren't that many numbers, like, there could be a lot of different, uh, yeah, you know, products, but there aren't going to be that many numbers to cross out. But that doesn't matter. Just you just have to write yeah. all the ones that are left over and all the ones that are yes. left over on top. So of number all. number one had a lot left over, right? Mm -hmm. What is the type? So you yeah. just write them all. You just write them all. Whatever you can't simplify or reduce, you just write them all. Uh, Tired Gummy asks, "What is the type of question for the last one called?" Um, it's not a really type of. It's just another. It's a very 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 large rational expression question it's it's not something that's supposed to be extra hard it's, it's just grueling and annoying but what you're doing is still the same as all the easier questions we've done it's just it takes longer because there's a lot of factoring involved okay so i'll take a couple of questions afterwards for everyone else take your break i'm going to see if there's a countdown function here in, on zoom but if not I'll expect everyone to be back by 10, 17. Okay, go reward yourself. Take a break, go to the washroom, grab some juice, grab breakfast, whatever. Go for it. <laughs> 